the actor in the scene behind me is from a TV show called Nautilus. It's probably no surprise to viewers of the channel that I quite like science fiction and older literature. So this show, I thought I'd give it a, a go and have a watch of it. It was apparently produced for Disney originally and then dumped onto Amazon and some other channels uh, when Disney decided they didn't want to particularly have anything to do with it. Now, um, how shall I summarise it? There's a lot of commentators doing reviews of TV shows on YouTube who go on about things being woke and that's the horror of them. There's worse than that. There's been bland and... Um, and this has some of that some of that as a problem. It hits all the right notes in certain ways. It has lovely scenery, nice looking actors and actresses. Someone's put quite a lot of money into this into the set. The Nautilus looks quite a lot like the original French um, submarine that the Nautilus in the book was based on. For those who are not aware of it, um, Jaws Byrne based the Nautilus on it on a real submarine to some extent, at least a look, the exterior look. Obviously, the real submarine did not have smoking rooms and paintings, as as in the book. But um, and it, any French people watching, please don't travel across the channel and kill me for my pronunciation. Le Plongeur was the real submarine that the Nautilus is based on, and I'll put a link to it down the bottom. But coming back to this TV show, its major problems was I don't think it knew what it wanted to be. It had um, a, a cast of actors all opposing the uh, East India Company um, and, by extension, the, the horrors of colonialism and that. Now, the historical inaccuracies I'll leave aside. We can view it as taking part in a fictional world that's mostly like the real world and, and let some of that slide. But where it did run into problems was a band of plucky rebels were about, oh, uh, at maximum, about 10 or so, we're taking on the whole of this um, analogue to the East India Company, and an organisation which in the real world, if you look it up, at one point in the East India Company, and it's the point this is set in 1857, had about 260,000 people under arms. So it makes the um, plucky rebels in Star Wars look slightly more realistic. It could have been great. They could have done something like a riff on a modern Blake 7 where the plucky rebels soon realised that you know, you know, taking on the empire is fine, but what are they actually going to do as such a small group? How are they going to make any impact? And perhaps realizing that you know, they've all got competing loyalties and different ideologies means that problems are going to pop up sooner than later. We have a, a rather thinly worked out communist Indian who, um, um, by way of talking about communism, quotes a few lines and is not particularly convincing at that. Um, we have the pl- the the requisite character, the plucky Victorian noblewoman out of out of place. Who, of course, uh, I don't, it may, I don't think it's going to be much of a spoiler when I point out that she's attracted to the dishy bloke behind me playing Nemo. We have a, a Chinese uh, lady who's supposed to have lost all her sons due to again colonial carryings on. Now, it has one, it starts with quite an interesting idea the idea that the Nautilus was designed by Nemo, as in the book, and but it was also designed with a French engineer, and that it was actually built for the East India Company and Nau- uh, eventually, and Nemo nicks it back. And the first few episodes aren't too bad as it happens, but then we descend into a very strange set of episodes we have one episode that looks like it's sort of escaped from the old fantasy island show where they're on a on a an island with a a very localized marriage with a guard force of i don't know about 50 60 soldiers which turns into uh, into a big and i uh, kid you not into a big fight into which the revolution involves cream cakes being thrown about quite a lot i kid you not (laughs) and that then we have every trope possible from Pulp Fiction. And anyone who's read a lot of that sort of stuff, like Edward Rice Burroughs and Robert Ian Howard, will know where some of that's going. We have islands with improbably large creatures with no food sources, the best of which is a giant eel cum snake, which is living on an island where it's an isolated island. And this thing is the size of a medium-sized ship and probably weighs hundreds of tons. And it had been feeding on the occasional shipwrecked sailor. One wonders how long 
it was getting away with that <laughs> on that wonderfully rich diet. Followed by uh, um, the, the that spectacular cliche you often find in Pulp Fiction, the isolated civilization, which makes no sense when you stop to think about it for three seconds, which is fine for when you're a lot younger, or it's fine even if you embrace it and just go with the silliness of it. But you either have to go with the absolute silliness of it and bite that bullet or provide some more credible explanation. And this was somewhere in the middle. We also had a couple of the amazing throwing knives at people trove, where the knife suddenly bounces into people's arms. Anyone who ever throws a knife in the real world will tell you this is not going to happen. Or in one spectacular moment, somebody drops a knife and it lands point up in the shoe and goes right through their foot. I suggest we'd probably have to be here for a good period of the rest of the age of the universe for that result to happen if I was to stand up and take a knife and try that trick. It also has people jumping off cliffs in the eye about 200, 250 feet up and just landing in the water like they've gone for a leisurely paddle down at Brighton or something. And, And using a method of manipulating the East India Company to overthrow it, which is, well, to say the least, improbable, although it's actually based, surprisingly enough, in a very simplistic form on real events. I'm always looking for a decent science fiction show or something like that that reinvents things or draws from material like this, but really the most I could give this would be, well, I don't really like grading things, but if if someone was to say, give me marks out of 10, it would be five and a half. It had so much more promise that it could have. I shall put a trailer down the bottom, though, in case anybody feels interested to watch it. It still had some interesting plot points, in which if, um, if someone was to renew it for another season, you could do a lot more with it and get a lot more out of it, improve it. But that's just... at this point, I think it's probably going to vanish in the way of so many other Amazon material, many series on Amazon that seem to be churned out, churned out. Go on for eight or ten episodes. You might watch them with a cup of tea or something or in the evening eating a dinner and then forget them.